All right. So it's Thanksgiving week mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah. Yes, it is. Rapidly approaching. Rapidly approaching, which means there's a member of our household will not see for a few weeks because he works retail. And uh, 50 hours plus for the next two weeks. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and absolutely. This is the time the retail workers bank their money. I remember that very well. Ten years of retail myself. Got to make hay while the sun shines. Yep. I'm just glad I'm out of it. <laughs> I have like yes. a whole rush. Yeah. Yeah. You've had enough. Uh, so. mm -hmm. All righty then. Welcome to Unearthly Upstate. I'm Mari. And I'm Matthew. And I apologize for the heater in the background, but that just started up. <laughs> <laughs> just our luck. Just click right on. You know, well, it's winter here over here in central yeah. New York, even though we've had some very cold temperatures a couple weeks back. We put some snow on the ground. We had a, like a couple inches. We didn't get nearly as many inches, though, as oh they God, uh, yeah. predicted. Lucked out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're back to more seasonal temperatures yeah, in the 30s yeah. and 40s. Sometimes it might get up to the 50s. But the, hey, let's yeah, swing it back to what we're talking about here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the area we're going to talk about, we're going to finish up in a smaller area of central New York. Mm -hmm. And that area got pounded <laughs> yes. with snow <laughs> when we got the weather. Well, it's a higher elevation. And we're finishing up our discussions of the urban legends, the ghost stories, and the history uh -huh. around Remston, New York, which is next to Steuben, New York. Now, in previous episodes, we have talked about a killer, possible serial killer, who is still alive. I double-checked. He has not died yet. He is still incarcerated. Uh, Bernard Hatch, who murdered, yeah. for sure murdered one woman up there, possibly murdered two other women and their children as well, but they yeah. were unable to connect him to the other murders. And then... And, and one of the families, they never connected to mm -hmm. the fact they might be dead. They No, no one's ever found him. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, yeah. And this, even though mm -hmm. he's still alive, yeah. there's the, the legend of the hatchet the man. The hatchet man. Yeah, well, the yes. hatchet man. Then we discussed Steuben, the namesake of the town Steuben up there, Baron Steuben, and his uh -huh. uh, estate and where he's buried. Yes, and he has illustrious role in American Continental yeah. uh, Army. In the American Revolution, mm -hmm. yeah. And he wrote a book mm -hmm. that was uh, on a manual of arms. All right. So now we're going to discuss a couple of the legends mm -hmm. and tales from the area. And the first one we're going to start with is, well, I guess if I was to title this podcast, or maybe I will use this as the title of the podcast, it will be The Church, The Rocking Chair, and The Doctor. Ah, the name of yes. It. And we'll start actually with the cemetery rocking chair. Okay. Well, we're not starting with the church first? Not starting with church. We'll go through the church next. Oh, okay. But I think we'll, we'll get the rocking chair out of the way was first. It the church? Oh, okay. All right. I thought maybe the church was the setting for the other two, so. No. Oh, okay. Fine. No. In fact, this rocking chair is not even in a cemetery related to the church. We're going to be talking oh, about. Oh, no. Wait a minute. No. No. It was, it, always, it was always legends about some old guy living next to a, a cemetery, and he'll be sitting in his Star rocking Hill. chair. Uh huh. Yeah, right. Okay. But this cemetery is not tied to the church we're going to be talking to about. Because remember, okay. I read that statistic about there being like 50 churches in the area. So there's a lot of churches in the area. Oh, yeah. And okay. there are a lot of uh, churches. Well, there were a lot of churches up there, but. Uh -huh. As the congregations found other venues to right. worship in, or uh, entire congregations just would died just, out. you know, yeah. or leave, and, uh, and so yeah, the mm -hmm. the sites are no longer but you know, you have being a lot of used. Cemeteries up there. And yeah, that's right. And in so fact, these uh, sites I, are being protected. A lot of them. There's like two or three, right? Uh -huh. Right around the Steuben Memorial. Yeah, I remember. Right. There's yeah, like two or three of them area. in that area. So there are a lot of little cemeteries, and there is mm -hmm. at the bottom of the hill the Welsh Cemetery, and we will be discussing mm -hmm. the Welsh quite a bit in this yeah. episode. So, but let's go to this urban legend. So this is one of the first urban legends you might hear of the area. Mm -hmm. And those of you in western New York are going to listen to this and go, wait a minute. And I'll get to why they're going, <laughs> wait a minute. When I... So hey, as you no. describe, there is a, um, there's this old guy who likes to sit on his porch on a rocking chair. Right. Just wait, you know. Just be one of those guys, you know, wave at people as they went by, just mm -hmm. enjoying himself. But he was really attached to his rocking chair. Well, he died 
and his rocking chair was left there. And supposedly his spirit haunts this rocking chair. But when the rocking chair kind of disintegrated, it also became a as ghostly wood does. apparition <laughs> as well, if I understand it. I've heard two different things. So one is the there's an actual physical rocking uh-huh. chair, and the other is just this ghostly rocking chair. I'm going to go with the ghostly rocking chair because we don't have enough ghost inanimate objects, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, But apparently if you're at this the cemetery where the old man was buried and at mm-hmm. night, the rocking chair will appear. Oh, the, the, the old man was buried at night? No, the old man was buried normally. I'm just saying, if you're at the cemetery at night, oh, you, oh, I you, see, you okay. see the ghost. You won't see the ghost, old man. You'll see the ghost of the rocking chair. And if you sit in the rocking chair, the ghostly rocking chair, you will die shortly after. Ooh. But they don't give a time frame? No, as you do. As you, you do. Know, you know, give a time frame on these things. Yeah. You know, because it's a ghostly rocking chair. It's a phantom rocking chair. Now, there is a YouTube video I checked out on this, mm-hmm. and somebody was like, look, it's the rocking chair. It was a blank screen. There was nothing on his video that you could see look like a rocking chair. It was just black. Oh, well, you no, know, you see, that's yeah. consistent with claiming that, that there's a, a rocking chair yeah. or a cryptid out there in the woods or something right. like that. But, yeah, the, the phantom... The whole mm-hmm. idea behind a phantom rocking chair is that it only appears at certain times, and yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, and I say people out in western side of New York are going to wait a minute because the Carmichael Cemetery has the exact same story. Mm-hmm. If you go to the Carmichael Cemetery, you will see a spectral rocking chair that if mm-hmm. you sit in it, you will die shortly after. But then the, the rocking chair disappears. <laughs> First of all, how can you sit in a ghostly <laughs> rocking chair? Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's difficult, you know. It's really hard to physically interact with something as insubstantial as a phantom or, or a spectral rocking chair. chair really. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't been updated yet. One of these years, it might be an easy chair. Maybe a bean bag. <laughs> Barker lounger. A lazy boy. <laughs> so- I but, had to get that out of the way, but that as, is one. you know with, with a with a phantom or a spectral uh, lazy boy, I can <laughs> at least recline and put my feet up before I die. <laughs> but I just love this story. I mean, it, it's a good ghost story. I could see a lot of people, you know, let's go look for the rocking chair, and they were right. being like idiots running around the cemetery looking for this rocking chair. And but the the legends are not clear which which cemetery it is. And like we said, there's quite a few of them up mm-hmm. there, quite a few small ones. I wouldn't recommend going to any of them at night. Well, they, no, that's interesting. It's not yeah. just rocking chairs, not just uh, spectral mm-hmm. rocking chairs, but also these stone chairs or benches. Yeah, there's a lot of urban legends well. about those too in certain cemeteries. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There's one that's supposed to be like the most haunted cemetery in the United States, and if you sit by the certain stone bench near an angel's angel statue, you would get a premonition of your death. Uh-huh. Um, when actually it's probably just a nice stone bench for somebody to come sit and pay their respects, but because yeah. the statue kind of creepy, it can. Kinda... Now, in uh, our research on this subject, I. I know other stone chair that have mm-hmm. spectral powers. Now there's uh right next to the mall on the east side of Syracuse. Now what mall was that again? Was that Shopping Town? Shopping Town Mall, yes, okay. that was it. Near there is another cemetery mm-hmm. with these stone benches. They they got these oh, like large cemetery, yeah. But they got these large stone they're like thrones mm-hmm. and stuff. And I heard stories about those chairs yep. too. Ooh, you sit that chair, you know, you'll have bad luck. Mm-hmm. Or if you certain sitting on this certain stone bench, it'll bring you good luck. So yeah. I've I've heard of both sides right, of the story. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So obviously this one's a big urban legend, mm-hmm. but a good ghost story given yeah. that. And the next one we're going to talk about, there have been some paranormal investigations into this yeah. place. Nothing really, I'm not going to say there's no really one ghost story tied to it, mm-hmm. but it is tied to the history of Remsen area. And it's tied to the fact that Remsen was very Welsh. Oh, yes. A lot uh, of Welsh people was, did settle in the Remsen area. It was settled by the Welsh. Okay, mm-hmm. you had a you had the Baron up on the hill, and at mm-hmm. the same time, you had the Welsh come to the area. Mm-hmm. And you still see a lot of that in the in the town, in the area. There are street names mm-hmm. that are definitely mm-hmm. Welsh. The Welsh flag but is prominent I, yeah, yeah. throughout so the town. You still have a lot of Welsh a lot, families. A lot of Welsh connections mm-hmm. in this town. Like I said, there was like 50-some-odd churches in the area just for the Welsh. 
Mm-hmm. Reason there were so many is maybe it was just one or two families would attend this church, but you had big families. Mm-hmm. Now, both me and you are from big families. Yeah, youngest of seven, both of us. Both of us are youngest of seven. Now, can you imagine? Well, you you don't have to imagine. Um, there's a big. But for age, our listeners, there's okay. a big age gap between me and my oldest brother. Okay, there's, so there's ten a years huge, between me and mine. Huge age gap, uh, but much more than that. I was going to school with children who were children of his classmates. So that gives you the, the gap. So for me, yeah. I never went with... Well, you had a wider gap between your oldest and... You know, yeah. And, I never had the experience you did mm-hmm. of every kid getting in the car and being taken to church. Oh, yeah. That was... The, I, <laughs> yeah. All my brothers and sisters were not that close to me. But you had that experience. Uh-huh. So you... Your family by itself, it's just nine people would show up. But that's what two pews worth? Yes, filled up. Yeah. Now imagine these are smaller churches. These are probably about the size of the church that me and you got married in. Hold about a hundred people. Mm-hmm. You get ten families in there. That church is full. Yes. Well, no wonder they needed fifty churches in the area. <laughs> right. <laughs> or knock out a wall and build a bigger church. Or build a bigger church. Yeah. So this this particular church was built the same way. It was built to accommodate some of the Welsh families that lived there. Mm-hmm. It still exists. Yeah. It's on the Register of Historical Places. And it's called the Welsh Stone Church, or it's also called the Stone Meeting House. Mm-hmm. I, last Doesn't it also come by another name? And um, it's, uh, the, the, it starts with a B. Uh, I don't want the B one, but I'm not going to pronounce the Welsh one, <laughs> which starts with a C. Oh, yes. I don't want to offend any Welsh by mispronouncing that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. What it looks like, okay, I guess I am going to offend some Welsh. It looks like it says Capel Carreg. I'm so sorry. I don't know I just pronounced <laughs> it. And if you, and I did put it through Google Translate, mm-hmm. and the, Google, yeah, the computer is just completely garbage. That's why I'm not presenting it in this episode yeah. like I would, would with the French or, or the mm-hmm. Latin. The, the computer is just garbage. Well, with, I'm glad you didn't Welsh. try to run any finish to it because <laughs> yeah. I swear to God I've seen smoke come out of mine when I tried to run finish <laughs> through it. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now this place is thought to be haunted. Mm-hmm. You got your orbs, you got the lights, you got feelings being watched. And some people picked up EVP there and that. Mm. But you gotta consider this is a place where people, you know, when they're born were brought mm-hmm. there to be christened and when they died they were brought there to be buried. Mm-hmm. You know, so generations of generations Welsh of people, yeah. So born we, and buried at the same place. So you could definitely see why you know uh-huh. th- this would be haunted, and I'm including this because it is kind of related to the last person we're going to talk about today too. Mm-hmm. But it was the only structure built out of native limestone, so that's probably why it still exists. Oh yeah, some of these that, churches mm-hmm. were built of wood and destroyed when they're kind of uh-huh. you know when they're no longer needed. So this one stayed, and it also known. Yeah, there was the other. It was known by so many names. It's the Welsh Calvinistic Methodist Church. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, this one, they say it's Capel Carig, different spelling. Mm-hmm. So, I like I said, I'm really apologizing my Welsh here, but I've got two different spellings of the same thing. And it's really just a Y instead of an I. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of uh, the Welsh language in relation mm-hmm. to the, uh, mm-hmm. the Rems and um, church there, mm-hmm. there is a plaque mm-hmm. On the front of the church, it's all written in Welsh. Mm-hmm. It commemorates the church all the way back to well, it, it, the dedication on it, which is in the 1830s, I think, mm. something like that. So it gives you an idea of just how long yeah. the Welsh families uh, were there. Uh, you know, shortly after, you know, like 20 years after the revolution, mm-hmm. this church was built out of the native limestone and given this dedication. And, and, uh, and it's, it's been there. there ever since. And mm-hmm. it's very well maintained. If you look at the uh, photographs online about the church, and you see just how uh, well maintained mm-hmm. uh, it, it is. Uh, it, from a, uh, an, an insurance investigator standpoint, it's in very good condition. Yeah. It's, in very, it's in excellent condition, very much so. I know it's a, a meeting hall now. Mm-hmm. I think you can rent it out. And, yes, yeah. they have weddings. Yeah. Or they have. You can uh, rent it out for events. And that sort of thing. And yes, they did have ghost chasers. Yeah. You know, shadow chasers, uh, uh, you know, doing their paranormal investigations around the area because of claims of paranormal activity mm-hmm. around the old church. I mean, the thing stood, you know, for, you know. Um, almost 200, yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. it was built in 1830. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So that's. Mm-hmm. Oop. 180 years, yeah. 180 years. 
Hello? Hello? Producer, Producer honey. Producer honey. Come on in. Would you like to come in? Mm-hmm. Producer honey would like to sit in on the, yeah, the recording she, session. Yeah, she, she's been mm-hmm. sleeping in the, uh, mm-hmm. kitchen lately, but for some reason, this yeah, is how you come she in was now. tempted to sit on my lap this morning, but no. Okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna go now talk about a man who died prior to the church being built. Mm-hmm. The more I read about this guy, the more he reminds me of Granny Weatherwax. Okay. From Discworld. Um, and those of you going, Discworld? Okay. I'm going to talk about Discworld a lot. Start reading the books. Okay. <laughs> but Granny Weatherwax is the most powerful witch in Lancure, which is a country that's nearly vertical. I, right now, my mind goes blank which part of England uh, Pratchett was using for his for his mm-hmm. uh, basis of that. But she is what you would, if you've watched, you know, or are familiar with any British folklore and that. Mm-hmm. She's like the local healer in that, but she's the most powerful one in, on the entire disc. She is always the one they yeah. call when they need somebody buried. Buried or have to make a hard decision. I mean, there's exactly. been some horrendous stories of what, that she has had to deal with. But one thing she talked about, and was a kind of her philosophy of her magic, was a thing called headology. Mm-hmm. Now, Granny didn't go for any reading or writing. You know, she could do a little, but that really wasn't her. But she did understand this fundamental psychology, but she called mm-hmm. it headology. Basically breaks down it's easier to make somebody believe they have a curse than to actually curse them. <laughs> is is what it broke down to. Yeah. So she has such a reputation. I mean dwarves were scared of her. Uh-huh. You know, because she'd show up and complain and complain and you know, they were scared of her. Dwarves aren't superstitious people, but you know, they were scared of her because of her reputation of being such a stubborn, strong headed woman. But this reputation worked in her favor, so people knew you went to Granny when things were bad because Granny could handle it. Well, he's got the nickname the Witch Doctor of Steuben, and his name was Dr. Roberts. Wow. Now, let me give you a background on Dr. Roberts. Now, Dr. Roberts came to Remsen from Wales. I will attempt to pronounce this again. Okay. <laughs> he was born in the parish of Lamastith. Lamastith? I can't do it. It's the double L, so I know it's a yeah. Lamastine. Carvenshire, Wales. Oh, God, please forgive me for that pronunciation. In 1775. Okay. Now, he was highly educated. He did know practical medicine from the time period, but he also started to mess around with holistic medicine, mesmerism, which if you remember from our Fox Sisters episode we talked about was yes. pre-hypnosis. So I guess you would call him a, uh, I guess in modern times, he'd be a, a classically trained doctor who would do the alternative healings to the side. Mm -hmm. But he also believed in his own headology. Once he moved to Remsen, stories started up about him. And these stories, he gladly let go on a portion or whatever. (laughs) And he might have helped promote them Uh because they put him in kind of this auspicious light. (laughs) He was called the witch doctor stupid. And some people really did think he was in league with the devil, but yet he could cure them. He was the one he went to when it was stuff was bad. Right. So he wasn't evil. He just knew how to use the spirits. Right. His wife was just as well educated, uh, would assist him. Sometimes she wouldn't assist him like a nurse. She would assist him like a co-doctor. There were reports of her. She was the one who did made the medicines. And after he passed, we'll get to that. She continued on with his practice. Which was unusual for the time having a woman do that, but she was held in such re- re- high regard. Oh well, along you know, with him too. Up to this point, there were yeah. there were women who, yeah, you know, were wise women that sort yeah. of thing. But it was uh, people, it was uh, women who would use uh, for the time period. It was unusual for a woman herbal to pick, remedies and unusual sort of for a woman to pick up a doctor's practice. Right. Okay, that's that's the point I make. I'm not saying she wasn't capable. She was very capable, but mm-hmm. it was just unusual for the time, especially in the Americas. Yeah, okay. you would have the midwives. You would have mm-hmm. that, but they were never considered doctors. And she was considered, she wasn't really even considered a doctor, but she was considered on par with him. So, right, so. yeah. He started this reputation of being this witch doctor, quote unquote, right. when he was in Wales before moving to the United States. And there was an example that he was... Uh, there was this widow when he lived in Wales uh, who lost a sheep. And then she asked him to help find the sheep uh, because he could apparently see where the sheep was. And he told her, don't worry, the sheep will be back next Sunday. 
if she would go to the parish church. And according to the story, she went to the church and there was the U. Basically, that was verified by the pastor. Oh, I'm in, oh, sorry. Yeah, there was the U, but it was dead. <laughs> Somebody had decided to kill it, cut it, and wear the sheepskin to the church. So that's how they found it, yes. Okay, oh. sorry. I totally messed up this telling so, of that story. So no alien autopsy on this one. Mm. No, but, you know. <laughs> she found her sheep. <laughs> so yep. there were, oh, so I'm just going to go over some of these stories. And we'll stop at each one and kind of discuss them. Sure. Uh, this one's kind of cute. He had apple trees. And there were some kids who got away from school, and the apples were ready to be picked, so they were out there picking. Right. As they climbed his fence to leave after they got their apples, a few of them turned to look back to make sure they weren't caught, and he was standing there staring at them at the house. And, like, all of them were, like, rooted to on top of the fence. They couldn't get over the fence. They were stuck oh. there uh, until he oh. walked up to them and basically chewed them out. Gave him some advice and then let him go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, want to discuss that story? <laughs> well, who were these uh, rapscallions who were uh, thieving from his apple orchard? Just local kids. Just local kids. Yeah. yeah. Thought it'd be fun to right. yeah. maybe do this as you do, you know, mm-hmm. when you're when you're young and you and there's precious little entertainment, mm-hmm. you know. Internet's not a thing yet, so yeah, <laughs> uh, stealing apples. Uh, so we go. <laughs> uh, amazing how how much it, it keeps people uh, out of trouble these yeah. days. You know, be, being able to switch mm-hmm. online and just go down a rabbit hole for a few hours and not steal apples and, and not steal apples. <laughs> but anyway, circling back to the story, these were local kids. Who yeah, probably uh, I don't know they. Do this sort of thing to each of the orchards? Probably, In the yeah, neighborhood? Probably. Probably. I wonder how much of a dare this was. Mm-hmm. Oh, I dare you to steal from uh, the witch. Dr. Roberts, Dr. yeah. Dr. Roberts. <laughs> His apple orchard. Ooh. And, well, how many kids are we talking about? It Just didn't say. And it didn't even yeah. say what he said to him. I would love to. Oh, kind, I would have loved to have heard what that it's was. It's like secondhand lions, lions you know, through yeah. almost all the movie. You see the one character give out his bit of advice to young men, but you never hear it until the very end of the movie. And that bothered the heck out of me. Like, what is he telling these guys? You never hear it until the very end. And then when you do hear it, it's actually a good piece of advice, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you have, uh, yeah. Watch the movie. Watch anyway. the, excellent movie. And so what, what, what was this invisible force? Apparently that- he just stared at them and they did, couldn't move. It was probably their own sense of fear and embarrassment that kept them <laughs> stuck right there on the fence. And how high is this fence anyway? I don't know. They, they don't give you that details in these stories. Very sketchy about their details with these legends. I can't wait to read your story. The, they were stuck on a 12 and a half foot fence <laughs> made of flagstone with this type of motion. <laughs> Gonna bore you to tears, folks, with all these little details. Once, <laughs> once we get around to our two parter, the apples were Macintosh, not Crispin, because Crispin hadn't been invented by Cornell University yet, or whatever. Yeah, I'm totally bullshit exactly. on that one. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I love Crispin apples, and what kind of apples were they? Oh my come to God. that. And <laughs> do you want to take a road trip out there and find this orchard now? <laughs> this is all to whet your appetite, folks. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm going to skip to the next one because you're really going to rip this one apart. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so Dr. Roberts, Dr. Roberts, his brother came over to the boat with him, and his name was Robert E. Golf, or Robert the Blacksmith, who was uh-huh. also, he was a veterinarian, as well as being a blacksmith. So, kind of cool combination. As some of them were. Yeah, so yeah. a nice combination. So, one day... Dr. Robert showed up and asked his brother Robert to come out to the, the uh, stable slash blacksmith shoppy thing. <laughs> a shoppy. <laughs> 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 S-H-O-P-P-E. Yeah, shoppy. And it was like getting night and Dr. Robert started drawing stuff on the ground and he drew this big circle and asked mm-hmm. his brother to stand inside it. And all of a sudden, there was like the sound of hail hitting the roof, 
and went on for quite a long time. And that was pretty much the end of the story. That, that oh. was the story that was related. Um, although it got, when it was retold, people said it was imps that were hitting the, the roof. It was gremlins. But no, but nobody was ever found out the reason why he did it. Really? So, mm-hmm. what do you think? I'm, I can't wait to hear this one. Well, okay. Uh, his brother, mm-hmm. a blacksmith. Slash vegetarian. Vegeta- 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 <laughs> not vegetarian, veterinarian. Vet- you gotta take the kitty to the vegetarian. No, sweetie, it's a <laughs> veterinarian. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so uh, what? Did he have some kind of personal problem or something like that? He needed ironed out and, Nothing and was figured his, his witch doctor uh, brother would be able to straighten him out. Never explained why his brother did it. Just say, hey, come out. You wanna see something cool kind of thing? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just for fun. They did it yeah. for the lulls, maybe. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. And was it really imps? Maybe it was hail. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know? So, but it it got around that he called all mm-hmm. these imps down. They hit the roof of it. But were they? What happened to them after they hit? Nobody knows. Were the imps hitting the roof, or were they falling and, and hitting the roof? I'm falling by the sound of it. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then. So it's kind of a cute little story. Mm, that um, sounds. Yeah. It sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. This one, he he didn't like he didn't like skin flints. I, I tell you that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he he was a big tipper, was he? He well, he didn't like people who like to you know penny pinch penny pinch. And there was two good stories about that. One, he was traveling, and there was this inn he stopped at to have a meal at, and it was not the best place. Mm. But they were charging like if they were a very nice place. So I guess if they were, so I guess it'd be like you go into a place and they're serving you McDonald's food, but then they charge you a five star Michelin oh. you know, type of situation. He pays his meal, doesn't complain, but before he leaves, he writes a bunch of letter of words above the fireplace and chalk, and then he continues on his way. The maid goes in to clear out his meal, reads the stuff that's above the fireplace, and she starts to dance. Uh oh. The uh, tavern innkeeper's wife comes in to see what's going on with the maid, and she reads the words and she starts to dance. Okay, I'm uh, drawing a line in the freaking sand here. Do not read the words <laughs> above the <laughs> above the heart. The tavern owner. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> checking on his wife because she's kind of got uh, pneumonia. You know, she's got breathing problems, and you can hear her breathing heavily. Comes into the room. He reads the words. <laughs> oh no. And guess what? He starts, starts to, dance. to dance. Well, he has the good idea. Call the stable boy in. Mm-hmm. Tells him, don't read the words. <laughs> and go get that guy who just left. <laughs> <laughs> so. And so this is how the he sta- trolls these. Yeah, the stable this boy. Overpriced. Catches up with him on the road. Yeah. Goes, oh my God, you got to save these people. He goes, just go in there, erase the words, and tell your boss to charge people fair from now on okay there we are and that was the end but i <laughs> oh, what a great legend <laughs> that one i love That's just all dancing <laughs> you know like i can't dance fever i can't do you go to two you know. <laughs> <laughs> that time when the people dancing came plague, down yeah. yeah the dancing plague <laughs> you'll dance to your drop yeah exactly yep. or, or saint vitus dance yeah, oh god yeah, yeah. Well, the dancing plague, they never knew what it caused it, except it was some sort of mass hysteria. But still, you got a whole town dancing. What was their care? Let's bring musicians in. That made it worse. If any of you haven't read about the dancing plague, please do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was a real thing that happened in Germany? Yeah. In Germany, yeah. It was very interesting. But here we are, maybe... Maybe it was the same thing. There were some letters around the fountain, people reading. Oh, I gotta dance! I gotta dance. Okay. Here, read these words. Oh no! It's like that. Uh, oh, the killing, the killer joke. From, oh, uh, you know, well, you know that skit from Monty Python where oh yeah, it was World War Two and they had this joke, that this deadly joke. Yes. And they tried to translate. The Germans tried to translate theirs into English and didn't quite work. Yes, I remember yep. that. Yep. Again, another good example. He didn't like people who were tight with the money. Right. He there didn't was, like skin flints. There mm-hmm. was a woman who was very ill, needed to see him, mm-hmm. couldn't afford to. So her family and friends 
gave her some money. They raised some money for her to go see Dr. Roberts to get cured. And she shows up with her husband and she gets cured, but they take off and don't pay the doctor. They, oh. they decide to pocket the money that their friends oh. gave them. Oh. A couple weeks later, she gets ill again. So now they got to go back. Hmm. Like, you, you didn't cure us. What, what are you pulling at? And he goes, oh, I'll cure you permanently if you give me the money your friends raised to give me. And how did he find out exactly. about the friends and the fact that they had the money, uh-huh. didn't pay him, but all these details yeah. about it. Well, he must have been a very good cold reader and being able to find out, mm-hmm. well, have a way of getting people to tell on themselves, it right. seems, in order to get information out of them through, you know, just yeah. ordinary conversation, perhaps. Well, he ended up taking part of the money, but then he cured her for good. You mm-hmm. know, but the point of the whole story, he is, he is trying to teach her, I mean, your friends raised the money to cure you, and you kept the money. You're being selfish. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, that was the exactly. whole thing. There were a couple odd, odd, other odd stories about him, like the one where these people had laid out some uh, fleece, fleece, laid out some fleece uh, on their lawn, uh, as you do to, they were probably uh, cleaning it and bleaching it, and mm-hmm. then you would lay it on your lawn to for it to dry out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's how they would bleach the whites. Yeah, and that's what they were doing. And they went inside for a few hours, came out, and they were gone. The the, the sheep's wool was gone. Oh. And at first everybody thought that uh, somebody had stolen it mm-hmm. because that would be your first thought, really. Yeah. You know, somebody came by and stole it. Um, then a neighbor co- came down and says, what is, what is your fleece doing up in my trees? And it somehow got up into the trees. The wind. It was perfectly flat up in the trees. No, everybody said Dr. Roberts did it with his magic. It was the wind. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they didn't mention how much wind they were exactly. getting that and day. And they can get windy up there, <laughs> yeah. So I'm more, yeah, but up on top of that hill, you know for sure. That story is very tenuous, but you know, Dr. Roberts would have probably gone, yeah, I did it. <laughs> yep, I did it. Would have said, sure. Yeah. So he, yeah, that he was loved all it. He loved those stories. Little benign little tricks. He loved these stories because, one, mm-hmm. you're going to pay him full price. Oh, for sure. Look what happened to that lady. You're not going to mess... Oh, oh, in that restaurant, too. Let's not forget. Yeah. You're not going to mess around with him by overcharging him for something he needs from you because mm. look what happened to that inn. Right, exactly. Okay. And, you know, if he can hold you, you know, with a, just a stare... Oh, yes. Like you did with the boys. Oh, yeah. And look, he can make your fleece go up in the tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he, very interesting how he used these uh, stories to right. uh, to uh, bring it about. And he was kind of a salesman. Um, I did find this. Uh, this is from the New York Heritage.org. And mm-hmm. it's the Dr. Danny Roberts collection. And there's more than one Dr. Roberts, but this is the one we're talking about. This, it was actually uh, a, what do you call these? Playbill? Not a playbill. Um, it was like a poster, but you'd hand out. This is from a out of book print by one of his descendants. It's like a little poster or a little um, flyer that would be hand out. Mm-hmm. And it's Dr. Roberts Wells, Medicatanium. <laughs> I think that's how you say that. Cures indigestion or dyspasia, liver complaints, jaundice, colic fever, ague, dysentery, heart headache, loss of appetite, flagellants, hypochondriac hysteria, dropsy, and heartburn. A person who uses the medicarium will not require the use of the lancet or any means of the healing art. Restores and revives the animal spirits, invigorates the system, cures all bilious disorders, colics, stomach, bowelisms, immediately inspires cheerfulness, gives comfort to tropical, takes palpitations of the heart and gives circulation to the blood, restores bloom <laughs> to the shallow the and sickly everybody. cheek, and plumptus of the <laughs> To the Malage habit, purges without pain, banishes fever of all kinds. The manicanium acts on the stomach. 
Okay, so... so it's mainly a digestive. I can get that much out of it. <laughs> and this was kind of the uh, the herbs and... and yeah, and this was one of his brews like he would sell, yes. That he would sell, right, exactly. So I guess he was a bit of a, a snake oil, too. Yeah, sounds but... like it. Probably just cocaine and sugar water. <laughs> probably. Well, you know, he was into hol- holistic medicine. He was into naturopathy. So maybe it wasn't just cocaine and sugar water. It was probably cocaine sugar water with a couple tinctures thrown in too. So yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because he was. He was considered that. But he, he's still pretty well known today up there. You t- people talk about him. And yes, he does haunt the area. Okay. There All we right. Are. Well, we're going to get to his death. There's nothing, I don't think there's nothing nefarious about his death. I mean, you were asking me, like, did they ever investigate it? But I really do think it was just a really bad accident. Hmm. He was out tending somebody who had gotten injured, a young child who got injured. It was a bad storm, and he was riding his horse home, and somehow his horse either got freaked out or slipped, something. But he got thrown into the embankment next to the road and hit, like, to hit a rock or something. But ended up getting severely injured internally Ooh. and died a few days, like died like either that night or a couple of days later at his home. And this was in 1820. And that's when his wife took over everything. Oh. But he is noted now to be one of the ghosts that you can see up on Star Hill trying to get home or trying to get out. You know, he's going somewhere. <laughs> Some people say he's trying to go home. Some people are trying to say he's going to try to find the patient. So uh, that's how the ghost manifests itself, is yeah. him uh, traveling. Traveling. Basically, yeah. that, which is how he died. And that's, yeah, uh, that's really, that has a lot to do with how ghosts manifest. They mm-hmm. have something to do with the time and place and the uh, incident mm-hmm. in which mm-hmm. they were made a ghost. So that does make sense. Yeah. It's not one of these unaccountable things where, you know, he shows up somewhere other than the place where he died. Right. And how he died. Well, you know what I find interesting is there are so many ghost stories up there, and he is one of the main ones, but they never attribute his ghost to anything nasty, which mm-hmm. I think is kind of a slap in his face, because look at the stories he promoted when he was alive about himself. <laughs> and now his ghost just is wandering around up there? Oh, come on. You guys can't, can't be a little more creative than that, you know? Exactly. You know, where is he You know, showing yeah. up and uh, teaching a shopkeeper a lesson, you know, I mean... <laughs> Things like that. I mean, we can have so much more fun with Dr. Roberts. But, no, no, he's just wandering around. Mesmerizing children who are stealing from apple orchards. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, or messing with your fleece. Anyway. Exactly. Or making your fleece, blowing up your fleece. Yeah, exactly. Um, or, or. Drawing down imps. Or showing up. Yeah. Uh, somewhere else. Did he. Mm-hmm. Did he, he and his wife have any uh, family? He has descendants, yeah. They still live in the area. And they still live in the area. So yeah. why didn't he show up at the church, you know, or at yeah. his ancestral home? Well, or... he the ch- like the stone church was built 10 years after he died. So, oh, okay. So, okay, that's why uh, there's no connection with him and the church. Well, that's okay, because yeah. the ghost exists uh, before the place. Yeah. So, But he didn't die near the, the church. He died mm-hmm. on a different road. On a different so road, okay. He died mm-hmm. up, you know, up further up on Star Hill, probably near the Baron. And it's interesting because how many people that, that when they saw or seen that ghost didn't say it was the Baron, they said it was Dr. Roberts. Yeah. You know, which is very interesting. Well, like we said, we think the Baron's pretty happy up there and he ain't going to bother anybody as long as you don't bother him. <laughs> you know, even when they just, even when they were putting that road in and found his grave, he didn't seem to be too upset about that. Oh, you found him underneath <laughs> that tree? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... So. Um, well, this will end our little trip at Remsen. I mean, for a small area of the state, it really has a lot of stories. Uh-huh. And yeah. I do recommend going up there. There's a wonderful restaurant up there, 1950s Styles Restaurant. Highly recommend it. Uh, check, very good fire. Check yeah, out the Welsh good. Cemetery. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, you can't miss it. There's the big Welsh dragon painted on a bar near it, nearby, you know. And, oh, I thought that was on the water tower. Oh, it's on the water tower. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, you know, there's, yeah. You know like I said, the, there's roads that are written in Welsh up there. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And they also do that big uh, art barn uh, festival mm-hmm. every year. Oh, I'm glad you uh, yeah. mentioned mm-hmm. the art uh, the arts because just recently, just mm-hmm. this, uh, I think it was in this last spring, mm-hmm. they had a visiting artist from Wales. Mm. And it's a bit of a sad story Aww. because, well, um, because the artist in question, I forget her name. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
but there'd be something for you folks to work look up. Uh, <laughs> I don't have my notes in front of me here, but you know, she uh, is a Welsh artist. Uh, she works a lot with found objects, and she's mm -hmm. a, a sculptor, and and does a lot with cloth and, and wool and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, she visited uh, Remsen uh, over the last spring. But while she was here, her husband passed away back oh. in Wales. And so her visitation was cut sh short mm -hmm. so she could go back to, to Wales, okay. you know, uh, for her husband's funeral. So there's still a big connection to Wales. With the yes, area there is. Now. There is. Uh -huh. And I said, it's a beautiful area to visit. And I, well, look, we we had three episodes just covering that little area of Remsen mm -hmm. and Steuben. So if that little area can get three episodes out of us, uh, some of these bigger <laughs> areas, you're kind of falling down, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. give me more. Uh, but, uh, exactly. So, well, that's the end of this podcast. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I'll, let's do some clearing houses. I, yeah. Yes, we are moving... Uh, some of our podcasts are going to be free on Patreon because we're trying to move our backlog onto it because we were using um, YouTube kind of as a repository for it. But with some of the changes coming down with YouTube, we're not sure much longer. They're going to allow us to keep a free channel mm -hmm. up. Uh, uh, content without, creators right Without now. trying to make yes. money for us uh -huh. to make money for them. And that's not what we yeah. want to do. So... It's going to slowly, we're still going to be putting up on YouTube until whatever happens, mm -hmm. happens. If yeah. nothing happens, it will, it will be up on YouTube. If they decide, yeah. if the worst, which a lot of people think might happen, to especially the smaller channels like mine and, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, ours, well, mine too. I have like one video up on mine. I, I have <laughs> um, a couple channels yeah. as well, which I don't do much with, but they might, you know, we might be losing those, so I don't want to lose those files. Content so, creators on YouTube are finding yeah. it more uh, more challenging yeah. uh, to keep their content on YouTube as so platform. because these aren't videos and, yeah. necessarily on our channel. It's mm -hmm. going to be easy to move on Patreon, but we probably from now on will be posting any videos we make onto Patreon for free or for the patrons, depending what the video is. I mean, yeah. some of our spur of the moment ones we just will put up for free. Mm -hmm. So I. Think probably from now on going over to Patreon. Even mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of free content there, but we're going to be putting in more paid content, so you can get a. It'll be a nice one stop shop place, basically. Yeah, That's what I want to use it We're very family for. friendly here, so I don't see yeah. why we. Um, even though some of the subjects do get a bit I, gory, I'm not and worried morbid, about the child but, thing uh, with our stuff because I just marked it not safe for children. Mm -hmm. Because we're not doing cutesy cartoons and we're not talking about ABCs and, and that. Although right. kids can listen to it. I mean, older kids are probably getting a kick out of some of the stuff. <laughs> I know I would have been listening to it. Really but, yeah. Um, but I just said, no, we're not. We're That's not the audience we're going for. So no. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Uh, also, um, again, just uh, like, share. Mm -hmm. talk people about it yes you thank know, you yeah. to our patreon subscribers yeah and all of our listeners all wherever listeners, you may yeah. be and whenever thank yeah. you for thank you very much for listening to our ghastly podcast bye 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 thank you for listening to unearthly upstate you can find us on facebook twitter instagram youtube patreon and on our webpage. we are also on apple podcasts spotify sprecher stitcher Podbean, Google Podcast, and Castbox. Please like, share, and view on your favorite platform. Unearthly Upstate is an animator liar production. The show is produced by Mari and Matt Manette, with purring provided by Honey and Lloyd. Research and writing by Mari Manette. Music is by Kevin McCloud, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Unless otherwise stated in the episode, the places mentioned in the broadcast are not paid or contact us for any type of promotion. Please check out our webpage for credit and sources for the episode. Thank you.